Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Jim Frankel. I am the founder and director of Music First. I'm actually doing a bunch of these exhibitor sessions. Um, this session that I'm going to present is on Practice First and Sight Reading Factory. So I'll spend the next 50 minutes or so demonstrating these two programs. This session is perfect if you are a band director, choir director, orchestra director, or if you're teaching any type of performance ensemble. Uh, the intent for this is to show you how you can use our assessment software practice first, as well as our sight reading example generator program, uh, Sight Reading Factory, to really help you out during this COVID kind of epidemic or pandemic that we're in, whether or not you're in person, uh, whether you are doing completely virtual, unfortunately, or in a blended environment where you're doing a little bit of virtual and a little bit of in-person. Anyway, I uh, hope you uh, enjoy the session. Again, meant for ensemble directors uh, for assessment and sight reading. So uh, a, a troubling statistic, and, and when I was a middle school band director, my basically the bane of my existence were was that my students did not practice as much as I begged them. Um, I would say, please, I did practice records, I did reward systems, I did uh, chair, you know, auditions where you can get knocked out of the chair if you, you know, you could challenge. I did everything I could to try to uh, instill a little bit of competitiveness, a little bit of uh, reason for practicing. Uh, but these devices that uh, are in the hands of our students are such a massive distraction. They're also a distraction uh, for us as well as adults, but it's no wonder that kids don't practice as much as they should. Um, believe it or not, the average uh, amount of time that a student uh, that's in our programs is spending on uh, a device every day is seven and a half hours. That's actually for high school age students. Middle school age students uh, can spend up to nine hours per day on average, not maximum, on average, nine hours per day on their phone. So, um, you know, what I'm when we created Practice First and when we partnered with the amazing folks at Sight Reading Factory, that was really our kind of intent was how can we gamify, how can we make practicing, how can we make sight reading skill building much more engaging, much more fun, uh, and most importantly, how do we put the, that software on those phones, on those tablets? So uh, just quickly, um, I've said this in, uh, in, in my other session on the overview of the Music First Classroom, but I'll say it here as well. Um, music, uh, technology specifically is at this point the only way to support a program in a virtual learning environment. Obviously, you need technology to do virtual learning. But uh, as many have said, and I've said it since uh, the very beginning of the pandemic, um, you're going to have to just teach differently. You're going to have to think differently. Uh, if you had 140 students in your band and now you're online, you're not going to have 140 students in a virtual rehearsal. You're not going to have 140 students in a virtual band concert. It's unrealistic and it's really chasing the wrong uh, star, if you will. What we should be doing in this kind of terrible time that we're in is instead focus on individualized student learning, uh, small group learning, getting, uh, building the best musician in every student that we can and having them have their own path at their own speed um, so that when we can finally get back into classrooms and make music together again, you haven't lost all that much. The kids may actually be, in fact, better musicians as long because we don't have the time where they're all in the same room. We can't really do individualized assessment, uh, formative assessment on the fly. Uh, it's, it's a time to focus on, on these students as individual musicians. Uh, and it, I think, uh, you know, I, I'm always the uh, eternal optimist here that uh, this could end up, uh, even though our ensembles are, you know, may not be playing a winter concert um, together, we're going to have some darn good musicians if you do this technology integration right. You know, I have like plan books and great, all this is kind of out the door. We, we're not in person, right? So how do we track student progress? How do we get them practicing? How do we make sure the instrument is in their face? How do we make sure they're singing every day? How, make, how do we make sure that they're practicing their cello, right? Uh, and, and, and technology is that uh, thing, in my opinion. So what exactly is Music First? Before we get into Practice First and Sight Reading Factory, it's important 
to look at the glue that brings all of these uh, or both of these fabulous software titles together. Music First is the only purpose-built learning management system for music education, period. Anyone else says that, they're not telling you the truth. We created a learning management system from scratch just for music teachers. So it's not like one piece of software that does one thing. It is a virtual learning environment um, where you can bring in 10 different software titles and a massive reservoir of included content. And that's what differentiates us from things like Google Classroom, like Smart Music, like Quaver, like Canvas, like Schoology. Uh, we are a comprehensive uh, K to 12, uh, but in this session, I'm going to be specifically talking about performance ensemble directors, everything you need. It's not just one lane, not just one software thing. It's, it's, it's a holistic approach uh, to ensemble teaching uh, with content and software. This is the most important slide, and I'm, I'm sure that others will eventually catch up, but right now we are the only ones who can say confidently at least for performance ensemble directors, that we work on every single platform, every device type. So phone, tablet, Kindle Fire, Chromebook, laptop, desktop. However you get to the internet, on whatever device it is, you can use Practice First, Sight Reading Factory, and Music First Classroom. The most important qualifier there is that you must use the Chrome browser to do it. And the great thing about the Chrome browser, it's free, it's made by Google, it's on every single uh, platform, it's not a problem, uh, and it is where all of the web uh, software designers are creating music for, music software, excuse me. If, you, if your students use an iPhone or an iPad, whether it's in school or at home, there is a free student app called the Music First Student App, uh, it is vastly improved. In May, we released a thing known as responsive design. So our software looks fabulous on iPhones now, that small screen. You don't have to zoom in and squint. It looks great. Um, so uh, again, free app for iPhone, iPad called the Music First Student App. Everything else, you just run it straight in the Chrome browser. We have a total of 10 different software titles um, available. Uh, and But we're only going to be focusing on two uh, for this session, Practice First and Sight Reading Factory. Now it's important to add one other um, uh, brand in here that, and, and tell why I'm not talking about it in this session. So you may have seen uh, recently in, in May, Note Flight Learn announced that they have their own assessment uh, feature called Soundcheck. It's an add-on to the amazing Note Flight Learn. And that sound check feature is powered by the exact same company that makes Practice First. So um, you can either use Practice First on its own, you can use Note Flight Learn with sound check on its own, or you can use both together. For now, I'm only showing you Practice First because uh, that uh, Note Flight Learn with sound check at the time of this conference has not yet launched. And I really don't think it's fair to show a product right, you know, I, I want to show you the full product. So No Flight Learn with Soundcheck is, would be added to this uh, if it had launched uh, before today. But check it out. It is a great option um, and it, it includes some really cool features. They just announced that you can get Essential Elements Interactive with every Note Flight Learn subscription. You just have to enter the activation code that comes with the actual printed book to access it. And then if you get sound check on top of that, you can assess everything from essential elements in it. So it is great. Again, I'm sorry, uh, John, if you're listening, I, I didn't show it purely because uh, we didn't have the final version to show. But uh, go to NoteFlight, check it out, and we have uh, on musicfirst.com a preview as well. So anyway, that's why I'm not showing it in this session, but it is it's going to be a contender for sure. But today I'm gonna focus on practice first and Sight Reading Factory. Before I do that, those programs combined with the Music First Classroom give you four different ways to use the software in your teaching. And this is extremely important in a kind of virtual and blended learning environment. The first is generic tasks. Generic tasks save you as a teacher a ton of time. 
So if you want your orchestra to practice a piece of music, you don't have to create as an assignment for the violin one, for the violin two, separate assignment for viola, separate for cello. You can just say, hey, strings, go to this score and play this, uh, play this section of the score, play the whole score. So a generic task is literally one button in practice first that makes the students go and find the content rather than you having to go create individual assignments for every instrument. A massive time saver. Specific tasks. That's when you want the students to do an exact piece of music and you want to point them directly to it. Maybe you're, you're teaching sixth graders and you don't trust that they're going to find Foundations of Superior Performance Exercise 72. So you can point them directly to it, but you point them to the score and then the students can select their part from that score. That's a specific task. A template task is where you as the teacher are creating part of the assignment. You're creating it yourself. So you're uploading a backing track. You're uploading a, a music, a music XML file for your students to be assessed on. And last but not least is free play. That means the students can use this software whenever. And unlike other platforms, the students can access all the content all the time. Um, in those software titles. So it's really fabulous to be able to, to give them that opportunity. Everything is single sign-on. So if you sign into the Music First Classroom, you're automatically logged into Practice First, Sight Reading Factory, and any other software that you have. It's all browser-based, so you just need that Chrome browser. And it's cross-device compatible, which means that you can start uh, working on one device, save your work, pick up a totally different type of computer, and continue where you left off. As long as you're using the Chrome browser, simply doesn't matter. So now we're going to jump in and take an in-depth look at first practice first and then Sight Reading Factory. So let's log on over to the Music First Classroom. Now practice first is only available within the Music First Classroom. And the reason for that, by the way, if you've ever wondered, is that the Music First Classroom is the student management the classroom management side of Practice First. So that's where you make all your classes, you create your students, you create your assignments. All of that type of stuff happens in Music First Classroom. Practice First is an add-on software title to Music First Classroom. So I'm gonna click on the Software tab. That's where you can get both Practice First and Sight Reading Factory. Let's click on Practice First and I'll give you an overview. So, on the left, you have a column of the available content that's that's available to you, you know, as a per. So we just added uh, 25 method books. Uh, there's a ton of shared content. We keep adding content all the time. Um, and, and if you ask about other publishers, some publishers are happy to license us their content. And some publishers simply refuse, even though we ask really nicely. So the available content is everything that's included with Practice First. The premium content. Uh, and by the way, interestingly, I'm on the main demo site. This is now all included. It's no longer premium, but premium content, I'll reset the filter. Premium content is all stuff you can buy extra. Shared content is stuff that other users have created. So if I go into uh, solo instrumental pieces and I pick up, uh, let's do trumpet, Arben, etude number one for, for trumpet. There it is. So uh, the Arben method is actually public domain. So this user must have used the original uh, etude number one, uploaded it, and there it is available. Now, I don't, I don't know too many high school trumpet players that can play that, but if you do, hold on to them. So that's the shared folder, great stuff. Favorites are things that you have selected as your favorites. My exercise is stuff that you've created. And then down here, you have a profile button. This is only available uh, for teachers. A student's profile is a very, very different. But in here, you can select your, uh, your gender, your uh, voice type, or what is your default instrument. Um, color scheme, if you're colorblind, you can set it to grayscale or red, blind, red green colorblind. Anyway, so that's that. Don't worry about uh, the admin panel because that's something you will probably never see. The second column are filters. This is how you find stuff in practice first. So yes, there is more content for certain instruments than others. Uh, there is a lot of stuff for voice. We're adding all state requirements all the time. Um, but we are limited when, when a publisher has a copyrighted work, we can't put it in unless we get their permission and pay a license. So we keep the cost of practice first very low, $7 per seat per year. Um, and that's why, because we don't have a massive amount of repertoire. 
So the type is all the different types of content we have in here. Right now, if you remember, the default was set to voice. So if I reset that filter, it, uh, it opens up everything. So I'm going to do all these different types are here, right? The series, all the different series that are available, uh, the instruments that are available, and then a title. But I'm going to choose voice. And again, I'm actually on the main demo site under the super admin. So there may be content in here that you don't see when you go in. Uh, this is stuff that we're working on or never, never got finished. But when I go into voice and I scroll down, I can see all the different things that are available to me. Habits of a successful choral musician is now included. Uh, again, this is voice, so that's what that's why it's showing that. If I choose, let's say, tuba, which is my instrument, here are all the books that are available for tuba. All right, but I'll stick with voice because I do not have my tuba with me while I'm recording this video. And I'm going to choose the, let's go to, down here to the Texas All-State Sight Singing for Middle School. Again, I'm singing because I don't have my instrument with me. So I'm going to pick a random one, level one, exercise three. And this is the Practice First interface. It's really clean, very simple, not confusing. If there's a multi-stave score, the student can choose their part from the drop-down menu. So I'm picking low voice. There's a play button if I want to hear it, a rewind button, go to the back, I can edit it. Now I'm in the admin account, so students wouldn't see that. Uh, there's a way to mark sections. So you can say, hey, I only want to, my students to work on this section. And there's a more button, and this is where a ton of really great stuff is. In the general tab, I can change the tempo and I can bring up a uh, embedded tuner. La, right? Uh, I can also uh, view a scrolling, so it goes from left to right rather than kind of that page view that I'm used to. Um, I can share this with others. I can download the file. I can upload the file. There's a lot of stuff. Under playback, I can decide whether or not I want the uh, audio, uh, the demo audio to play, a backing track to play, or the metronome to play. That's when I'm playing it back. And the recording, I can either have the cursor follow me, I can uh, record during a metro with a metronome, or I can play the backing track. In this case, I'm going to do metronome, and I'll click on more, and I'm going to click record. Now, in this example, I'm going to get a couple of things wrong on purpose. I'm going to sing a note uh, out of tune. I'm going to sing the wrong note entirely. I'll sing the wrong rhythm, and I'll change and vary my tempo. So here we go. I get my opening reference pitch. Do, re, mi, fa, so, so, fa, fa, so, so, la, so, fa, fa, so, fa, mi, mi, re, do, re, mi, re, do. All right, so we parse the scores out for you. We don't just give you a lump score. We tell you how you achieved a 76, okay? So for those of you listening, you're probably like, yeah, that's about right. So first of all, let me say something about the color of the score. Yellow means that the teacher has set a threshold of a score that is higher than this. And that threshold means that the teacher says, unless you get an 80 or higher, an 85 or higher, a 90 or higher, it's not good enough. You have to keep practicing, keep trying until that score color turns green. And so yellow means not quite. By the way, red means, wow, that was terrible. Okay. So you have red, green, and yellow as, as colors for scores. Here is my participation trophy. I played 100 or I sang 100% of the exercise. My pitch score was a 75. My rhythm score was a 77. Okay. Now I'm going to close this to show you. Now this is what we call simple feedback, this kind of colored line underneath. When I take my mouse and mouse over it, it says that that first C that I sang was really sharp. Then I was great, but a little bit of sharpness but wow, you sang an F sharp here and an F here. 
and then ooh, you were super sharp and then you're a little flat and then you cut it off early right so there's a ton of feedback and this if you remember i went so la so i only sang that a quarter note but it knew that i didn't sing it for a half note right then i did pretty well here pretty excited and then i got i went really fast so now watch this when i go to more and go to general and say show full feedback this is what i call the psychedelic slug trail and all of the variations of the color is how out of tune i was so you see here where suddenly it jumps up that line jumps up that means that i sped up so any variation in the horizontal axis is your tempo variation that is extremely powerful here's why other programs if you if you go very fast and you're ahead of the beat you'll get every single note wrong afterwards right what this does it compensates for your rhythm error or your tempo error but is still grading you on on how you did with the rest of it so uh, uh for example on smart music this would all be wrong right at least the last time i tried it they may have fixed it but i, I think it's probably still that way so this is really rich valuable feedback Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sing it as best I can and try to get a good score this time. Here we go. Do, re, mi, fa, so, so, fa, fa, so, so, la, so, Fa, fa, so, fa, mi, mi, re, do, re, mi, re, do. Hooray, I got a 91. Now, well, some of you might say, wow, Jim, that was so great. You should have got a higher score. The bottom line is that my temp, my pitch is not as solid as others. I'm not a singer. So I got an 89 for my pitch score and a 93 on my rhythm score. Let's go in and look. So there we go. Now my rhythm I thought was pretty good, but I guess it didn't like me at the end. Um, now watch when you, this has the ability uh, to um, change the uh, level of difficulty. And I'll do that when I get to assigning exercises, but I'm very happy with that. I just wanted to show it to you. Uh, it, it's pretty cool. Now, Question we get all the time, Jim, there's no repertoire, there's no repertoire, there's no repertoire. Well, that's not really accurate. First of all, in the uh, premium folder, let me go into premium and I'll reset the, and I'll go to premium. There's a lot of stuff that you can purchase along. There's tons of music that is an additional purchase, right? So we have 600 scores from Hal Leonard, 100 scores from Excelsior, and we're adding more and more all the time. We've got stuff from Kendor, Macy Publishing, um, uh, Bandworks Publications, You Won't Miss a Beat. We've got uh, Dale Duncan's S-Cubed. He's doing a session right now showing a little bit of that. We've got uh, FJH's Measures of Success, Dennis Meyer's Text. There's a lot of stuff in here that you can purchase. So whenever, oh, there's no repertoire. There is repertoire. It's just not included. You can buy it. All right. So uh, with that said, um, uh, I'm going to create my own exercise. So when you create your own exercise, you can bring in any music XML file. So Finale, Sibelius, Dorico, Note Flight, Flat, all create or export their scores as music XML. So you can export any notation file and import it into Practice First. The really special program, at least for Practice First purposes, is MuseScore. So if you go to MuseScore.com, and download a score, you can upload that MuseScore file as a .mscz file and it'll upload directly. What I'm going to do is what most people do is a music XML file. So I'm going to click load score and I'm going to go in and find this little twinkle twinkle little star. Now I, I, uh, I Julia childed it so I had one ready to go so I didn't have to fumble about for the purpose of the video. So I'm going to double click on that and it will upload a music XML file that I actually created uh, in NoteFlight. So here is my music XML file. 
you have the option of uploading an actual recording of it. So the students in uh, Practice First uses an amazing technology called Match My Sound. And Match My Sound is actually matching audio recordings, not MIDI. So that means that if I wanted to upload a, an audio recording of a trombone actually playing this, so that my students can be assessed against a trombone sound rather than synthetic audio, which is what I'm going to pick here. Uh, it's just a far more accurate way of doing things. So I chose synthetic audio, so it, it'll sound like a computer playing a trombone. So twinkle, twinkle, little star. I don't need to put trombone. Uh, the uh, author is Mozart. Uh, okay, default score is right here. So hey, kids, I just want you to get an 80 or better. If you get an 80 or better, it's going to be green. I can make it public and share it with others, but I'm going to click save. And this is now ready to go. So if I press play, it's going to sound like a computer. And if I click record. Bum, 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 I know I got the last note. Wrong. All right, so I got a 95. I got a, a, a 90 on my pitch. You get the idea. So you can upload full scores. You can upload Muse scores. Okay, whatever you want. I didn't pick that out. It's great. Um, so uploading your own examples, very, very simple. Let me go back here to uh, my exercises and create your own exercise. So you can upload any score. You can also create an audio only exercise. And this is pretty cool. Watch this. If I click create audio only, if I already have a recording of one of my students playing that exact same piece I just played, I can upload it. If I don't, I can go and record it directly on my computer. Bum, 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 bum. And now I have an audio file. So rather than having to notate the music that you've already purchased, just record one of your students playing it and all of the other students will be assessed based on that benchmark recording. Very unique feature, super cool. All right, so that is uh, the gist of practice first, okay? Uh, you can upload a score, you can upload unlimited, uh, you know, your own music, uh, music XML files or Muse score files. Um, or you can use the included content. And when, when I was designing uh, Music First Classroom and we were talking to Match My Sound six years ago, we talked about, like, when we talked to teachers, what do you want? And they said, look, we don't want to have to pay for music that we never use. We just really care about the accuracy of the assessment so that I don't have to go back and listen to it because if a kid gets a 70 and is crying and I go back and it sounds great, but they just sped up, so they wanted an accurate assessment, that was number one, and they didn't want to overpay for repertoire that they never ever used. So that's why we designed Practice First the way we did, and we're very proud of it, I'll be really honest. The one thing that we get asked, and, and, and our, our good friends at Smart Music get asked as well, we cannot, it is just simply not possible at this moment in time, we cannot assess non-pitched percussion. So that means your snare drummers, your bass drummer, you know, non-pitch percussion. It just simply the computer, the web, the assessment algorithms cannot do it. Maybe one day, but as of right now, uh, it can't do it. So if, you, if you're worried about that, what we do with our percussion students in Music First Classroom, we just use our audio recorder instead, which is, is, is really a great option. So that's a quick overview of Practice First. I'm now going to go into Sight Reading Factory. So Sight Reading Factory has been around for a while. Um, Don Crafton and Adam Rabung have created an absolutely uh, incredible uh, algorithm. And the algorithm really composes brand new uh, assessment or uh, sight reading examples and never ever repeats them. That's actually what is so special about Sight Reading Factory is that every time 
you open up an exercise, it's the only time that specific exercise will ever appear. So it is pure sight reading. The students are not going to be given 100 examples that they will eventually repeat. They're never going to get us another one twice. So first, you're an ensemble director, band, choir, orchestra. How do I use this with my full ensemble? Well, here we go. We're going to click on the Start Sight Reading button, and it's going to say, what instruments do you want? So there's a tab right here called Ensemble. So let's say you're a string orchestra teacher, and I want my string orchestra four part. I've got a high school string orchestra coming in. I've got levels. So when you mouse over the levels, it's telling you what are the rhythms, what are the leaps, what are the rests. Uh, really pretty cool. I'm going to do level two for now. What time signature would you like the example to be in? Well, let's do this one in three, four. And if you're a string teacher, what is the suggested key signature, right? Level two, the kids are just, you know, kind of, Let's do G major. I think that's a great key for strings. So there are two different modes. Free play, you just get the example, you just do it. <coughs> Challenge mode actually puts things in like a timer, disappearing measures, all kinds of things that makes it a little bit more challenging. But if you've got an ensemble sitting in front of you and you have the ability to project your laptop or phone or tablet, Chromebook, up to a screen, this is the absolute perfect like bell ringer activity, do now, whatever you call it. The kids have just come in, they've sat in their chairs, they're ready to go, and you pull up a sight reading example for the students. I'll blow this up a little bit so you can see it. There we go. Now, if I press play, this is the one and only time that this will ever be heard. Here we go. Now, is it Mozart? Is it Beethoven? Is it Sandra Dachau? No. But it, is it really good or, or is it quality sight reading material? Absolutely. If you go, well, this one's too easy, you can click next and it'll make a new one. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Next makes a brand new one. Next makes a brand new one. If I think this is just too easy, I can click on level two, right? And say, let's make this level three, make it a little bit more exciting. Start free play. So now it's a little bit harder. We've got some slurs. We've got a lot more eighth notes. We've got some ledger lines. Uh, let's try another one. Okay, pretty cool. The same, it works for band, concert band. You just have to train the students a little bit which line to read. It works for SSA, SATB, um, SS, whatever choir you have. If I go in here, instead of string orchestra, I say, you know what, I'd like to do a choir multi-part. It will say, well, what are the voice types that you have? Well, I have... Uh, today, I have an SSA chorus uh, that I'm working with, so let's just do that. Next. Ready? Three, four, yep, and let's do it in uh, C major. Go. And you can have them sight solfege sing this. Pretty cool. There's a tuner, so you can, uh, you, what that'll do is give you your opening, uh, excuse me, give you your opening pitches. Right, so there's that unison C, or actually an octave C. Pretty cool. A little gearbox up here. You can do use annotations. That means, hey, my students can't sight sing solfege, so I'm going to do movable do with a la bass minor. Okay, let's do that. Um, and click next. Now I have my solfege. Pretty cool, right? And last but not least, I'm just uh, to, so that we don't feel leave the band directors out. We'll do concert band. We're going to do not C major. We'll do B flat major and start. And like I said earlier, what you're going to have to do the first time is train your students. Flutes, oboes, you're on the top line. Clarinet, trump, or, uh, you know, clarinet, trumpet, tenor sax, you're the second line. E flat alto and Barry sax, you're on the third line, French horns, low brass, and drums. And again, let's hear it. Excellent way to build sight reading skills. Now, 
I'm going to go back to the uh, opening menu and now I'm going to do a sight reading example for myself. Okay, so I'm going to go to voice and I'm a bass and I'm going to do level three and I'll choose four four time. I'll choose D major and I'm going to go to challenge just to show you what this looks like. So it's giving me 30 seconds to count down. Uh, but I'm not going to, I'm going to do instead of 30, I'm going to do 10. So you don't have to wait that long. Uh, do I want the cursor on? Sure. Why not? I want the measures to disappear after I'm done singing them. I want them gone. And let's turn the record on. Here we go. Start. That's fine. Click allow. Okay. It's going to start. Do, do, mi, mi, re, mi, uh, mi, mi, re, mi, uh, oh boy, fa, I shouldn't have recorded this, mi, fa, 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 do, ti, ti, do, mi, so, mi, do, finally got my act together at the end, my apologies. I'm not going to retry that because that was so terrible, but this is really great. If I click next, it gives me a brand new one. If I think, you know what, this is too hard for me. Let me go back in here and say level one. <laughs> start. Let's try that. Oh, no, I didn't mean start. Let's go to level one challenge. Ten seconds start. Here we go. Let's see if I can do any better. Oh, boy. All right, here we go. Do, re, mi, fa, mi, mi, re, do, re, mi, fa, so, fa, mi, re, re, do, re, mi, fa, mi, mi, re, do. Really fabulous uh, uh, practice, drill and practice for sight reading. Now, when I was a middle school band director, I'm going to make a very uh, painful admission here. I almost never did sight reading with my students. And do you know why? It was such a pain in the butt to go over to the music library, pull out an arrangement, hand it out, play it, hand it back in, and hope that I got all the parts. And that would probably literally take between 10 to 15 minutes to do something like that. So to be able to have this, you know, example shining up on a board or saying that the students go home, and do it would build would have builded would built my students sight reading skills tremendously and in the time of covid where we're doing individualized learning this is an absolutely fabulous tool for kids to go you know i'm going to start with level one and you can actually go in and make custom levels just so you're aware if you go into level assert you can make a custom level and say you know what i only want the students doing half notes and quarter notes that's it easy rhythm difficulty next and uh, I don't want them to uh, do more than a third leap uh, I don't want the leaps to be let yeah greater than a third actually the pitches range is only going to be a fifth right I'm going to click next and now when I go to uh, begin challenge and click start look at how easy this is it's only a fifth so that makes it much easier again sight reading factory absolutely fantastic tool so how do we use Practice First and Sight Reading Factory with our students? Here we go. I've got about uh, 20 minutes, maybe about 15 minutes left. So here we go. I'm going to go into an orchestra class that I created. I'm going to click Create Task. So my students are already in here. I've already, it's week two, and I just got Music First Classroom. I'm very excited. And I want my students to do a playing test. And this is going to be Music First software, and I'm going to do practice first, and I'm going to write play the assignment the best you can. Okay, so this, if you think back to those four different types of tasks, this is a specific task I'm creating. This is going to be due on September 4th. Uh, I'm going to tag it to the national standards under perform. Okay, and I'm not going to have them convey meaning, but you get the idea. I am going to add this to the gray book. I'm going to make it worth 100 points. Okay, and I'm going to click Create Task. 
Now, if I want to share it in Google Classroom, I just click share in Google Classroom. I choose the class that I'm teaching and that's that. Pretty easy. If I want to share it in Remind, I just click share in Remind and the kids will get a notification on their phone. But before I do either of those, I have to actually go into practice first and find the piece I want them to, to perform. So uh, this is strings. So I'm going to reset the filter. I'm going to go to, uh, they, it was listed in premium again. This is the main demo site. So I'm going to go to all for strings, book one. And I'm going to go down to uh, hot cross buns. Right? So here is a score that I have found. Yep, that's what I want my kids to do. And I'm going to click assign to student. So I went in and found the piece. Now watch this. And if you have practice first and you're watching this looking for tips, this is the biggest one of all. Let the students choose their part. That will be less clicks for you. Show advanced option is the secret magic spot, right? So what is the score goal? Remember that yellow score, the, the idea of if you don't do very well, it's a yellow and you have to do better to get green. This is where you can uh, uh, change that score goal. So the first time you give the kids the assignment, make the score goal a 70. The second time a 75, then an 80, then an 85, then a 90. Never make it 100 because that's crazy. You're just trying to get them to practice. That's the point of this. The grading is how difficult do you want the assessment algorithm to be? Well, in this case, I'm going to just make it easy. I want it to be easy. I want the kids to do well on this. Tempo goal. If you turn the tempo goal on, it means that they're going to have to sing it at 100. If you turn it off, they can put it whatever tempo they want and still get a good grade. That's up to you. It's a pedagogical decision. Playing mode. Do you want them to choose it or do you want, hey, you know what? These kids are just getting started. I want the metronome to play. I want the metronome to play. And this is great. Special type. Regular is the way I've shown you. Sight reading. The minute the, kids, uh, the students hit record, the music disappears from the screen. So they have to have it memorized. I mean, excuse me, sight reading, that, that's memorization, which I just described. Sight reading disables the play button so they can't hear it ahead of time. Anyway, I'm going to click add and it closes. Okay, so let me just make sure I have a student in this class. I think I do. I'm going to make a brand new student. The student's name, actually I already made one. The student's name is going to be student. Here we go. So I have a student named student. Add to class. Now what I'm going to do is go in as uh, a student and I have my high school orchestra class and when I go into there there's a playing test that's what I just created and I click it. Play the assignment as best you can. I open it and practice first. There it is. I choose my part. I can play it so I can get my starting pitch. And I'll click record. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Bum 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 bum. All right, I got a 93 out of an 80. Uh, that's great. I'm very excited about that. My pitch score was a 100. It was just my rhythm for some reason uh, wasn't so great. But anyway, I'm clicking submit. I'm done with that. That's fabulous. The reason why that score was so good was because I put the grading rigor at easy. If I had it at medium, which is what I did the first time I showed it to you, it wouldn't have been so easy. I wouldn't have got such a good grade. Anyway, I'm going to go back into my high school orchestra class and now I'm going to create a sight reading activity. I'm going to call this sight reading task. Okay, The task is a music first software. It's going to be sight reading factory and I'll give them very specific instructions. Do this. Okay. Actually, what I'll do is I'll say, uh, choose your voice type, then select the uh, 
then select level actually then select the level key and time signature that you are most comfortable with so in this case I'm giving my students the option this is going to be due on September 7th which is Labor Day too bad it's going to be worth 10 points create task I'm now going to go in and do a generic task in sight reading factory so I'm going to say uh, choose voice type level key and time signature okay oops so now uh, I'm going to let my students try it as many times as they want I'm going to let them choose their instrument I'm going to let them choose their level key signature time signature the only thing I'm going to do is say they only get 10 seconds before they have to start recording and I'm also going to make sure that the metronome is on when they're doing it I do like that disappearing measures feature I do like the cursor being on and because they're voice students of mine I'm going to do movable low with uh, movable do with a law base minor I'm going to click attach assignment are you sure yes I am and this is what it looks like for the kids and then I'm going to wrap up sight reading task click I open it in Sight Reading Factory because it's the first time this student is opening it. Uh, I'm ready to try the assignment. I don't need to see the video. I do have to test my microphone. Yes, I'll allow it. La 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 la. I can listen to that. La 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 la. Fabulous, great, and now I am ready to go. Sounds good. Okay, choose voice type, level, key, and time signature. So voice, bass, level one, four, four, C major, start. Gives me 10 seconds. I played the opening pitch. I'm audiating it. Here we go. Do, do, re, mi, mi, fa, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, fa, so, so, fa, mi, re, do, do. So I can listen to the assignment. I can try another one. If I try another one, it gives me a brand new example. But I'm going to submit it. I'm happy with that. Yes, I am happy. Go for it. So now what that's doing is uploading it and I'm good. Now when I go back in as a teacher and refresh this task page, watch what happens. Stu Dent handed it in, but it didn't auto grade them. That's because Sight Reading Factory does not do automatic assessment. If you want sight reading examples uh, automatically assessed, you need to buy practice first, right? But having them together is the ultimate tool. So when I click on the submission here, it brings me directly to that student's uh, example, the exact one that they had. I can click play and hear it. Now, I don't need to hear the whole thing, but you get the idea. I can give them their grade right here. So if I remember right, it was a, a grade out of an uh, uh, out of uh, let me give them an 80. See what happens. Here we go. Save. The task has been sub successfully submitted. OK, so now when I go in here and refresh the grade book, there's the 80 percent. Pretty darn cool. Anyway, you can do recurring examples. You can give them weekly sight reading, weekly practice first examples. It's, it's really pretty exciting. Anyway, I, I hope that you enjoyed that little overview. Let me go back into my presentation and wrap things up. So just quickly, uh, in terms of uh, pricing, Sight Reading Factory Practice First with the Music First Classroom is $9 per user per year. $9 per user per year. I didn't even show you any of the content in Music First. That's a, I, did a, I did that session in a different room just now. Uh, but there's a ton of, there's a band course, orchestra course, choir course ready to go, a full year's worth of assignments. 
So $9 per user per year is what I just showed you. If you're not convinced that you want your students to use it, you can buy Music First Teacher just for yourself. Uh, and that's $1.99 per year. You get all the software that we uh, offer. Music First Junior really isn't relevant to this specific session, but it is a, a uh, conceptual curriculum for K-5, to $3.99 per year. And Music First Assessment uh, is meant to be uh, for student growth objectives or you know measuring student growth. You give them a quiz or test at the beginning of the year, give them the exact same quiz at the end, and you analyze their progress. Anyway, I'd like to thank you all for spending your day uh, with us today at this first of what will hopefully be an annual event moving forward together, our Music Ed Tech Conference. My name is Jim Frankel. If you want to get in touch with me, I'm jim at musicfirst.com. And if you want to try this software out for yourself, if you don't, don't already have it, go to musicfirst.com in the upper right-hand corner, click free trial. Uh, as, a, as a registrant for the conference, we'll probably be in touch with you multiple times via email with that same information. But whatever the coming school year holds, I hope that you'll consider Practice First and Sight Reading Factory. And when No Flight Learn uh, launches Soundcheck, which should be in a, in a week or two, uh, make sure you look at that and have a look and see if that fits your need. I personally think that if you were to get that entire Practice First, Sight Reading Factory, and Note Flight Learn with Soundcheck uh, and their content libraries, you have absolutely everything you need. Anyway, thank you very much for spending time. Appreciate it. Hope you have a fantastic school year or as, or as fantastic as it can be. And uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks.